I'm Alexandra, and you're watching Local Band Smokeout. And we are live right now, just for a heads up. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Amaker in the yeah, building! Hell yeah! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you, sir? I'm good, man, thank you, man. I'm, I'm feeling it. I've been, I've been following along for the past hour, and I've been catching up catching up to you the live shows are wild it. they're they're a little crazy we 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 do tortures trivia giveaways uh we have guests like yourself on the show do me a favor though uh, properly introduce yourself let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now and of course plug and promote anything and everything okay well my name is robert amaker i'm from mississippi but ever since i was 10 years old i have traveled traveled around for a lot of reasons one was the military thank you for service. You got to live in Cur thank you I got to live in Korea for three years, and I started singing a lot over there. I started falling in love with uh, just the nightlife and, and seeing how people react to music. After I got out of the military, I moved to California to pursue acting, and I actually didn't make it far with acting, but I actually got lucky because I created a, a small band called Mercy Mode, and I was we were able to play at the Vampire Diaries conventions and the original conventions, too. So that was a pretty cool gig. And then from that... I became interested in film scores and stepped away from playing in bands and started pursuing just film scores. And um, as I was pursuing this film score, um, one of these songs that I was writing, it just there was this image that kept going on in my head as I was writing it. Usually when I write songs, I write for people about their lives and stuff. Usually I don't write for myself, but this is one of those times where I didn't have anybody to write for. So I started writing for myself and um uh, I wasn't getting anywhere. This song took a total of eight months, and I would say probably it took around two to three months to do each each section. And that song was "Lost Memories," the one I, the second one I sent you. And uh, after after we made the song, I wanted to do a music video of it, of all that all that vision that I had. And uh, the more I started thinking about that, the more I realized, well, there's there's no way this can be seen in just a seven minute video. It's not going to make sense. And I thought, okay, well. Why not make it into a 15 minute or 20 minute short video? And then I kept trying to think, well, there's going to be questions that need to be answered. And the more I kept just trying to think about trying to tell this full story, the more I realized that this is this is very expensive and I can't afford it. And uh, but I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to just give up with the idea I can't afford it. So I started thinking about what can I do to get closer to that goal of seeing that happen, even if it's a very hard to reach goal. And uh, it's funny because I was, uh, my wife and I, I was living in Sicily. We had this fortune cookie that said, step out of your comfort zone. And I kind of take those things a little seriously. I don't know. I just always get this little sort of message with it. And it always seems to resonate with what's going on. And, uh, you know, I was doing the film score stuff, but none of my music was selling to film. And it's just like, this doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't understand. What am I doing? What can I do more to promote this? And I thought, well write a book, write a book. And I've always been intimidated at that because I've always had learning disabilities and grammar and, and speaking has always been very complicated for me. You seem like a good but, speaker to me, by the way. Well, I've been a lot. Um, excuse me. But yes, I, uh, I started working on the book and then I started thinking, man, this is a cool story for a book, but then the whole process kept going. Then I started thinking, well, okay, well, there's there needs to be this pre lore. Why why does why are these events taking place? And then I thought, okay, well, that would be a cool idea for a comic book. I'll do that later. I'll just tell the pre lore series in a comic book. And the idea, what I would like to do with a comic book series, is allow musicians to send their music in later, instrumentals, and just to have that accompany the uh, the actual illustrations online. So when users are reading it. Uh, if there's like a section where there's like a sad theme, well, the music will have like this sad theme that it continues to play. But when it gets to like an action theme, the music will kick in. It'll be like doom and whatnot. It'll just get really beefy. And it'll be this ongoing thing that I'm going to do because this is something um, I've been collecting enough illustrations for the past three years. So where when we start this process, it won't be, well, here's the first illustration and then we wait this long time. 
the idea is once we kick this down the road next year, it's going to be release after release after release. And so I want to create this in a way to where musicians, since I kept trying to figure out as a musician, what are other alternatives I can be seen will create the book, but how can I help other people while creating the book? We'll create this sort of multi-platform that doesn't just benefit me and brings marketing to what I'm doing, but also sort of ricochets back with the artist that's putting the music on there. And for anyone that hasn't hasn't looked into it, there's a couple of websites out there that a lot of people have to subscribe to, and there's millions and millions of subscribers for these. It'll blow your mind. There's like some of them, some 30 million subscribers on some of these, and these people are paying five to ten dollars for each one of these. And all of these uh, comic books that are online have this music already going, so this isn't something new. And we'll just be adding on to that. And uh, you know, I discovered your channel through Breaking Serenity. And I'll give a shout Love out those to guys. Guy, this guy. Shout out to Nico. Those guys are awesome. And I was blessed to be one of the features. And and they're 32 or 36, however many, man. It's like so many. Every day it's it's another person. So and that was all. Did you do piano for them? So I did. I did a, a little bit of piano for them. He had like three different piano players amongst the whole album. So every not everything will be me that you hear, but I also did a couple of orchestral layering, a couple of violins and uh cellos and things like that a lot of aggressiveness with that stuff so when you were when you were in you said film school in california i went there for acting just straight up to pursue acting do you recall the movie where the score or the music of the film sparked this idea of you not wanting to be a band anymore what movie was that A movie that exists, and the whole theme is around the score. Or are you, what are you referring to? I'm, I'm, I'm just trying exists? to picture like you're you're in acting school, and you had this epiphany moment of where you decide I want to now make the music for movies. But I imagine oh, I there was like a moment or a movie that like put it over the well, top. It, not a movie, but a, but a composer. His name's uh, James Warner. He died in 2015 in a plane crash. And the beautiful thing about this man is like, nobody really knows who he is, but he's the one who composed Gladiator, Titanic, Casper, Land Before Time, Apollo 13, all those classic movies that a lot of us grew up with, including Casper and American Tale and all those. He composed all of those. I know every movie you just mentioned. Time, they're, they're incredible movies. And uh, I was lucky enough that my father and my mother were very much into James Warner's films. I don't know what it was. It was like he he covered a bunch of genres from aliens to kids cartoons, um, all sorts of stuff. My dad would happen to be into the history side. My mom happened to be into cartoon side, but they loved James Warner. So they used to sing a lot of his music to me as a child, put me to sleep. And uh, as I got older, especially when I was like 10, when my family split up uh, and my mom went our own way, I used to like hum James Horner's music to myself for like comfort because it was like reminded me of my mom. So as I got older and I got to California, I realized how actually complicated it is to survive there. And, you know, it's, it's not a fair world at all there at all. And it, and it's, and it's tough to, uh, to sort of accept that sometimes. And the truth was, is I was, I was failing. I wasn't, I wasn't getting anywhere. And, there was like this whole spiritual aspect that was going on behind all of this. And while that was happening, it's like James Warner's music came back into my life at that point too. It's like, I hadn't listened to it for quite some time, but here it is. And it's like, I started melting again, like I was a little child. And I, and I thought to myself, if I could create music anywhere like this to where it could have that impact on someone else as it does on me, that would be the most incredible thing ever, even if it was just one individual. And I don't know. I, it was something about that. It was this pulling. And it pulled me out of California and brought me to Alabama, got me away from the city, got me away from all the distractions that I was going through. And, uh, yeah, man, I started turning into a hippie. Grew my beard out, grew my, <laughs> grew my hair out. Uh, started doing nature walks and started falling in love with nature and started trying to just incorporate all of that in a form of balance. And... Um, and then, yeah, and so I started pursuing I'm, film scores. I'm going to drop your Kickstarter link in the chat right now 
Uh, go ahead and tell everybody some of the benefits if they were to uh, support your Kickstarter. Okay, so the Kickstarter is for a 10 minute CGI film. And the reason why I'm trying to do this CGI film is because, I mean, I'm assuming most people listening here are musicians. And even with marketing, it's really hard to be seen. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And so one of the things that seems to be working out in the market, and, and you know, for me, this is all just trying. It's trying different approaches. I, want, I, I believe bringing a CGI film would bring awareness to both the book and this, in the comic books, because I have sort of this, from experience, I, I'm afraid that I'm going to get to the point where I release the book and it's just like the music. It's like, where, how do you put this in front of people? So I, I got with a, with a new, with a new company that's, uh, that's built and they have a great resume. All of that is attached on the Kickstarter. They have a lot of examples available to see and they, tr I trust in them and they trust in my product. And well, they're asking for 30,000 and we're adding an additional 10 to it for sound effects an additional 10 to it for, for uh, voice acting. Now what's going to be unique about this book. And, you know, one of the things you can look at if you want to support this, the CGI film is we're allowing for people to become characters that they will actually get illustrations for. You can design the character and I submitted to, I submitted to you like a bunch of, uh, custom ones already, and those are for people too. They're wicked cool. They look, they look kind of like uh, like Diablo Four characters. Yeah, I mean, I can make you one too. Uh, I the last podcast I did, uh, and I you know brought our break in Serenity. Uh, it was the People's Choice Award, and his name is Alvin. I don't know if you if you had a chance to meet him yet, but um, yeah, I, I love doing the podcast with him. I was like, you want me to turn you into a character for the book? He's like, yeah. And uh, so I gave him the format and he gave me all the weapons of what he wanted, the, the pictures of what he wanted to look like. And That's now cool. he's going to be one of the he's going to be one of the lead and support characters in the film and uh, well, in the book. And I think that, I think that's kind of unique. And I want to make sure that everyone who has a chance to do that has has a character that each one of those characters. So wait, wait, we, could, we could pick we could pick our weapon and everything if we do that. Within the scope of the realm, so you wouldn't have lasers in a medieval setting, but yeah. you would be able to. There is a variety of that kind of stuff. You can customize the weapon however you want. You can make a, a, a Darth Maul sword. It doesn't within the realms of it. And also, there's different cities. I sent you, you know each one of those cities that I sent you on those illustrations, which are is really a, cool. There's a different, it, which is a different faction. So it's basically you choose which faction you choose. You know, if you want to be the special forces group or if you decide whatever you want. It so I could have I'm not like tell, limit you. I could have like a like a double edged sword or axe, but then it detaches and turns into a, a, a bong. No, I'm just playing. But. I mean, yeah, you, you could. I, I'm I'm building weapons for, from scratch for this. I have a couple of ideas of making arrows that have like these little glass tubes that are attached to it. Because you know how in a lot of medieval movies you, you see where they they shoot fire arrows. Well, it's not realistic. Fire arrows would, would immediately go out as soon as you, you release them. I'm trying to come up with actual things in this in this book that don't exist, such as having these glass capsules attached to both sides of an arrow that when it reaches a little bit of pressure, there's a little needle that breaks it. And inside of it is acid. So these Trutharian warriors that they're going to be fighting, it's, it's almost impossible to kill these dudes. So being able to just throw some acid on their face is sort of the strategic that these archers are going to be going for. So I'm going to be going over that you could be a tribe leader i mean alvin's character for example he's this lone wolf and as i kept going around developing the story i started creating this other facts and i was like you think your character might have a brother like a long lost brother over here or something and like i don't know it's a way for me to not only create my story i don't think it's cheating but, i think you know, it's fascinating it's a, it, it also allows me to interact with you guys too because i get to talk with alvin about the progress of the story because there's going to be a point, and it's not really a spoiler. I mean, it's going to be pretty obvious what's coming. There's going to be a giant battle pretty much right away that's going to be coming. And the thing is, is regardless of the lore behind everybody, whether they like each other or not, they're going to have to fight these guys, like Game of Thrones going against the Nightwatch. They're going to have to figure it out. How do you do all this in, in 10 minutes, though? You don't. You don't do that in 10 minutes. So the 10-minute short, that's the novel. That's the whole novel thing. Okay. The ten minute the ten minute short film covers a it sh it shows 
so there's like a 400 gap between the pre-lore and where the novel kicks off. And so the it's like the introduction to these guys being introduced to the Judean again. They haven't seen them in 400 years. Like they they lived in caves after the nuclear wars went off for about 100 years. And when they came out, you know, a lot of these stories of these big, tall, evil dudes, you know, it's like their great, great grandma told them. And then 100 years go by and now they've advanced from like the Stone Age back to using steel again. And, um, you know, now they're like questioning, like maybe our grandma was retarded. 200 years ago and maybe she doesn't know what she saw and this idea of these mighty Drutharian warriors controlled by this entity doesn't exist but they really do they're just they're hidden underground far away and so the short the short film will show one of these dudes it will introduce him to the whole script it will have this girl I remember the illustration I sent you where it shows the girl uh, washing clothes and there's a guy out by the tree line Okay. Well, that's how the short that that is the intro of the short film. So everything you see there is what you will see in the short film. So it starts with this dude going after this girl. And the reason why he's after her, the reason why he's after anyone, period, is because he has to torture them. And by torturing them, he collects their energy. And the more pure they are, the, the more energy that he gets from them. And he's able to use that energy for his little God entity in this pretty disturbing is it way. Gonna, is it going to show the tortures? You know, I want to, but I don't really. I mean, in the book, I'm going. It's, I'm going to make it as graphic as I can. I mean, I want to keep it truthful. I don't want to make it graphic for the sake of being ridiculous. But I want to be. I don't want to like. Like you want to know that, right? If if it's going to be in the book, you would like to know those details. There's no reason to keep it hidden. So sure. I'm going to make sure it's there. I'm going to make sure it's there. So, they this Trutarian captured this girl. This patrol of Sole warriors hears it. They go and they meet this guy. And, um, you know, I told you I have a couple of people that I'm looking at. It's nothing's confirmed right now until this Kickstarter is done. But, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and mention him. Alex Terrible. I, I'm going after Alex Terrible. I'm going to get this man. He can watch this later. And when I sit down with him one year from now and I say, listen, man, I was talking about this two years ago. You go watch. You know, he's going to see it. Can we say the other other person that you've hit up? Because I've, be like, I've been like I've been like prepping wanna, this at, at times throughout the week, but I haven't said it either one of the names. You know, I I will say it. I will say it. You know, I I reached out to Dayshell about like two years ago, uh, and the what? reason I don't know, man. It was it was this this moment. I don't even know if it's appropriate even to talk about donations and stuff, but someone had given me a donation for some music I'd given to him, and Dayshell just had released some music at the time and he's always releasing music that's awesome so i'm not going to tell you any specific names everyone need, needs to just go listen to everything but something had just come out and i realized for like the past like eight years i've been ripping this guy's music by taking his music and adding it to my video game you know behind all my video game images and sharing with my friends and stuff it's like it's like man i take all this guy's music and i do all this stuff with it and i haven't like paid a dollar for it I haven't given him any appreciation and so i he released a song and he and i, I was like man i want to pay you for this song can you uh can you give me your paypal and he did and i guess he thought i was going to give him a dollar because he went on his stream and talked about it but i i sent him a couple hundred dollars and i i told i said man here's a couple of videos i i've used of all of uh of your of your music and my songs and he, and he loved all the he loved me. he's like this is badass so he loved all the videos and everything. And we, we started talking and I started asking him about film scores. And he, he actually said he was interested in that kind of stuff. And uh, he went on to say he fixed his guitar with that. And we started talking about a year later. I was playing for a, a band called Marlis Mirror, which I got the name from. And we were going to work with him as a feature. But that's exactly when he started this album with Pegasus. And then I was like, no, I'm too late <laughs> We had and a, so we I had, am. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just. He's he's such a professional, and I admire the man so much that I want to wait for the product to be finished for him. But when it when it's finished, that is the man that I believe will be able to compose the score for this. I am happy to inform you, Pegasus dropped two weeks ago. Okay. okay. So oh, yeah, he dude, is now, thing. I think, free to jump on some side stuff. But yeah, Shaley is such a good guy. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to talk to Alex. But uh, that is a beast, and I feel like he would be. Is that the the evil guy with the goggles and the things on his head, like the little? Yeah, things? I mean, I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know if you're able to show those illustrations or not, but that is who Alex is going to be. And when basically one of those guys comes up behind him and sticks a knife in the back of his throat, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't reach back. He doesn't grab it out the back like a wimp. No, he reaches up front, grabs it from the front, with just just pulls it through. Alex, just, just, you know this Alex terrible scream, man, and he just jams it into the guy in front of him. It's it's that this is guy cool. is going to be just the next level beast. And the idea is that like it takes these guys this much energy to take one of them down, like, and then they base, you know, I'm I'm. I'm spoiling all this, but because it's all in illustrations and it needs to sort of be seen. Otherwise, people aren't going to support it. They're not going to just support, just talk. They got to see it and understand it. But then eventually they, they take this dude's head after they finally take him down. They take him back to the city. But the, this evil entity, you, you were asking who Marlon was and who the mirrors are. There's right. a lot to go on with that. I don't think we, I would be able to take I didn't know that was your old band name uh, until you just mentioned it. Yeah, uh, it was. And I was like, man. I got jealous. I was like, this, this, I needed this name a year ago because I couldn't come up with a name. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be good to these guys. And if, if things ever go south and they get rid of the name, I'm going to, I'm going to ask for it. And, you know, they decided to do their own thing in a different way and they gave me the name. And so cool. patience worked out. <laughs> uh, it worked I, out. I, I know I, I prepped you ahead of time about the trivia, about the hot sauce. Did you bring hot sauce? And that counts. Man, that counts. I, I'm nervous, man. I mean, it pops off, but I mean, I got some, got some more things. I don't know if I want to bring them out. I'm scared. I got some. I got some beast ones. I got a, a ghost pepper blueberry, right here, and then I got a, a blueberry hell from Hellfire Hot Sauce. I'm in the blueberry mood today. But here's the cool thing: you get to pick the trivia topic. I need to know what movie or TV show you have seen the most movie or tv show one or the other and uh let me know and i'll look up trivia on this movie or tv show it's impossible to stump you because you've seen it so many times but my goal uh, is to stump you whether I, whether you get it right or wrong i'm doing the hot sauce regardless you know i got a thing in the back i don't i don't know i, I should probably leave it in the back but it's one of those things for christmas my mother gave me that's got like all six eight of those hot sauces all lined up Oh, yeah, you got one of the little kits. Yeah, I got one of those little kits, but I've never opened it up. Um, let's see. I don't know, man. Forrest Gump is something that's always stuck with me. But I'm trying to think, how are you going? I'm trying, like, I'm trying to prepare this strategically. Like, how is he going to stump me with these? I got to be careful with these, with some of these. Forrest Gump is uh, a, good, a good place to start. Okay. Well, we got Forrest Gump. Um, it's one... I like uh, I love Titanic based because of James Horner, and uh, I would say this is one not a lot of people know. Are you saying Horner or Warner? James, James Horner, H O R N E R. I recognize the name. When I heard this, when you heard, I heard you say it a second time. I was like, I think you're saying James Horner and not Warner. And I have seen that name. And you said he died in 2015 in a, a plane crash. That sucks. Yeah, man, it's horrible. He was actually supposed to go on to score Avatar too. And uh, and nice. thankfully, they used a lot of his music from the first Avatar in that one. And yeah, he scored that one. People didn't know he scored that. Well, let's go. Let's go with the Titanic one. Okay. Let's go. Again. I need a second to look up trivia on Titanic. But uh, I've always loved the Awakening, which is a, a track of yours, and I just feel like it's it's one of those songs where like as soon as it starts, it's like essentially the entire song is a build up. Like it's yes. just building up until it ends, and I just love how like the layers just, just like go on top of each other. My favorite part is when you have those vocalists at the end, um, just kind of go, still get the lower ass. Yeah, I love all also, that. How does how does it's also freaking serenity too? Oh, okay, cool. How does a uh, something like that start from scratch? Like, how do you how do you go about making your music? Do you just do like a couple of of riffs on a piano? And then just MIDI into other things and build the layers. Or are you actually like recording every single individual section? Well, I I start with the piano. Everything is wrote with the piano, um, the entire thing, including when I go to write even the other uh, instruments. I'm layering them in with a uh, with the keyboard. And I don't, you know, I'm not I'm not trained and. 
it's just sort of a trial and error kind of thing. And I just sit down until I figure it out. And uh, this isn't gonna this isn't gonna sound good, but one of the things that always helped me was, after you know, putting it putting the putting everything away for about a month or so, and and then going back and then smoking a little bit. And I don't know, it's like I was able with the awakening, I was able to write the entire song in in twenty minutes. Wow. I, I, I yeah, I I smoked a lot, and. I, I went and I sat down and I started playing and it was funny because my mother sat right next to me and I don't know, the whole thing worked out. And it, and like you said, it's sort of like a buildup. So it doesn't change a whole lot. It doesn't get, it doesn't get complicated. And it's one of those things where when you're sort of playing it and you're building it up, you, as an artist, you, you can start hearing the other instruments in your head. So it became something that was very easy to memorize. Even in that 20, 30 minutes, I didn't, I didn't really have much to, uh, to record, I had a couple of little things on the side, and of course, it sounded pretty, pretty horrible after I sobered up. But then I, uh, I kept, I, I just kept working on it. And the the reason why I chose that one for the music video is because I felt like it was going to do the worst. I thought because it was a build up, if someone was just listening that in the background, it would be, it would get repetitive, and I didn't want that song to just get lost because I feel like the song is special when you have a chance to see all the little dynamics as you said that go into it. There's even an instrument called an A-frame. I don't know if you if you're familiar with that. I wasn't familiar with it until I got to Sicily, and this guy pulled out this little thing. He, and you'll see him in the second half of the video. His name is Motto, and uh, it's just a quick little glimpse. He's he's tapping on it, and uh, that thing's an A-frame, and it's basically this Japanese sort of Asian instrument that I'm looking gives it up off right this, now on the side. I've I, I've never ever seen this thing. It gives off this this really cool like ambient beat and stuff. So it's like there's a lot of different elements going into that. And the reason for that is because I want to be able to play these these live one day and I want them to be visually cool to see and not just straightforward sound. So I want there to be a bunch of different instruments doing different things. And uh, with the Sylvia Dolores, the part at the very end, that was just that was just a, one of those moments. I was walking around in my house and... Uh, trying to find vocals and I started I started humming it out loud and I and I, I recorded myself doing that on the phone and I sent it to the engineer and he brought he brought her in and that was the first time I met her and she went that on to cool. work with me and and like five different songs in Breaking Serenity she she's incredible man that is cool I only have one Titanic trivia question for you but I feel like it could stump you in Titanic it is only mentioned once how old old Rose is when she throws the you know the heart of the ocean into the ocean. One of her kids in the background says she'll be next month, saying her age. How old do they say she is? I want to say sixteen. No, no, no. This is this is old Rose when she throws the heart of the ocean. Oh, when she throws it away. Yeah, so you're very very off. One more guess. Oh yeah, yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking when because at the film they 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 uh she said well they were talking they mentioned how old she was. You're talking about that scene. You know we just watched that recently. I want to say she would have been like a hundred. And... No, stop. She would have been ninety nine. I think. That is not correct. Ow. Enjoy the what hot sauce. You had it right, but you lost it. She is a hundred in the scene. They say she'll be a hundred and one next month. That was my second guess, but in, I'm not going to enjoy. <laughs> enjoy the hot sauce. I'm going to do some ghost pepper and blueberry. Uh, cheers. But yeah, they specifically say she'll be a hundred and one next month. So let's uh, let's do that. And then we'll do a couple more questions. And then I unfortunately got to let you go, but, uh, it's a stinger. It's a stinger. What, uh, if, if for some reason the Kickstarter does not hit its goal, is there a plan B or some other way to still accomplish this? Let's do it this way. The, the, Look at the Kickstarter as the plan C. 
the plan C was just something we wanted to see right now. If the people wanted that based off the illustration, because the illustrations are about a year and a half of a lot of stuff. So, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. And if you have a time to really go into detail with all this stuff, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of interesting things. And I don't know if I mentioned this. I wanted to say this. You asked who was Marla. Uh, Marla is going to be a, a young girl with Down syndrome. And she is going to be the girl that can pretty much turn these guys on their ass. And so this is going to be, I think, one of the first books where I'm trying to push it into a film that feature a young girl with Down syndrome. So that's going to be so that's going to be Marla for you. But we're going to be pushing the novel to be finished for next year. And then after that, we'll do the comic book. So even even if the Kickstarter doesn't work, the main goal is the novel. Gotcha. Um, I, I only have a couple of minutes left, and I apologize, but I'm going to go ham on, on promoting every day, as as you know. <clears throat> Excuse Thanks me. so much. Thank um, it, I, I want to do a couple fun ones. A couple fun ones before we let you go, though. Uh, tell me something that scares you. Phobia it just, just freaks you out. If if you're if you're you're dabbling in some some booze or some ganja, I don't know if you partake, but your favorite munchy meal on one of those nights. And then the third third question is something that you listen to music wise that we would not expect you to listen to. Ah, oh, yeah, this is this is, this is easy. Okay, so I. Uh... I think we should start backwards. This is what happens when you smoke. You forget the first question. By the time you get Flip to the last up. thing, right? <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, I told you that I was in Korea, man, and I tell you what, I fell in love with K-pop. K-pop really? is, yeah, dude, K-pop is awesome. I love I some BTS. I prefer. I don't know, man. Especially when I was there, I was there from 2008 to 2011, and there was a lot of bangers that came out. In fact, I started learning Hangul, Hangul, just so I could go and start singing, singing that stuff because I just I couldn't help it. And so there's this white guy walking around with a Korean ring pong K-pop going on. So, yeah, I don't uh, think you would expect that. Because I was also this metal guy with my tattoos and all that. And over there, that, that's gangster. And here I am listening to K-pop. <laughs> I, that'd, be um, me. that'd be me. Uh, I mean, I honestly, man, I, I, I spoil myself and go to Waffle House. I love pancakes. I can only and I can only eat them if I if I have Damn the it. I, I, used to, them, I, know, I used to live in Florida and I miss Waffle House, bro. There's no Waffle Houses in California. Well, y'all got Huddle House. That's what y'all got, don't you? We got we got Denny's. No, y'all got Denny's. And we got Denny's. Norms. So. And I think that's it. Those are the two equivalents. But uh, and then the first question was I'm, I'm phobia, right? Yeah, something that scares you. I I, I hate flying, man. I in fact. Every single night this week, I've had nightmares of flying. I don't know what it is. I, I don't like it. Like Final Destination always, stuff? No. it's It doesn't help that the, the pilots in my dream are like fly, flying through trees and things. That doesn't help. I'm like, how the hell are we still alive? It doesn't help at all. But um, I don't know. It's like all my dreams are always the same. It, it's, you know, I've lived in Cal. I told you, I, I went there for the, the acting. I've lived there twice in my life. And I don't know, it's always felt like home. So everywhere I'm at in the world, I'm always having dreams of trying to get back to California. And it's it's always a thing. But it's always like, it doesn't always crash, but it's still, it's, it's just, that's my phobia, man. I'm, when it's time to come back to that California, more than that. let's drive. Okay. Let's, let's yeah, drive back to California. I mean, James Horner, I mean, dying also in the plane crash and most, most awesome singers from the 50s. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, dude, I I really I really hope that uh, you hit your goal. I think it's so cool that you are willing to create characters and give them their own weapons if they if they support the Kickstarter. That is such a fun, cool idea. Like I've not heard of that before. Uh, regardless, I think uh, whether or not it happens, the book, the novel is fantastic. Uh, I've been a fan of your music for a long time. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you, you giving us the opportunity to be able to support you on a, on a daily basis. But uh, this is fun, man. Uh, I'll I'll drop the Thank link you. one more time, one more time in the chat. But uh, cheers to you. I I'm assuming that you're you're roll tied now that you're in Bama. No, nope, actually, since I moved back from from Sicily, I'm in Georgia, so I'm here in the new LA for a little bit. Gotcha. Cool. So, but you will probably see me. You'll probably see me in Cali in the next two years. Okay. Cool. Hell yeah. Well, have yourself a fantastic night, sir. I know it's late over there. It's, what, like 9.30, 9.35 or something? 
it's it's game time, man. It's game time. Yeah, it's it's we're, it's money making time. <laughs> yeah. Take care, guys. Thank you so much, Robert. And the guy. Give me a hell yeah. I'm gonna post this on YouTube tomorrow morning. Take care. Roger that. Cheers, Peace sir. Up. Good night. Have fun. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band smokeout.